Now, a number of weeks ago, as I was uh, meditating and, and thinking about what I'm going to preach on, as I came closer to the end of my series that I was busy with, I felt in my spirit a word jump up called fear. And it kept on coming to me, you must preach on fear. And I fully didn't understand it until much later that this is going to be a life-changing series for you. Amen? Amen? And that you're going to have freedom in a world of worry and fear and anxiety. It'll never disappear. It will never be gone. But what we can do is overcome it. Amen. What we can do is have victory through it. Amen. So we're going to start this series this morning on freedom in a world of worry and fears. The way to rise and live above it. That fear that surrounds us. Now let me say this before I get into the word of God here today. There is a type of fear that's not bad. A fear that you respect the speed limit. <laughs> a fear about crossing a road at the wrong place. A, a, a fear about things that will protect you. But when we're talking about the spirit of fear that is tormenting, the spirit of fear that's come to destroy, the fear that's come to get you to have a false perception of your life, then that fear is the one that we need to focus on and deal with. In 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, it reads, For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Tell the person next to you, God hasn't given you the spirit of fear, but of power. Love and a sound mind. Now fear will corrupt your mind. Fear gives you an imbalanced view of life. Fear will make you see things far bigger that is coming against you than it really is. So God will give you a sound mind when you get rid of and overcome that fear. I was saying in the first service, I have some cats. They, I love them. Me and Zelda love our cats. And one of my favorite little ones is called Missy. But if anybody comes into the house that she doesn't know, she runs. She gets behind a cupboard and hides away. And now I've got to go and find her after those people leave. But she has a fear that shouldn't exist. It's a fear that's exaggerated. Because those people would never hurt her. They would never want to do anything to her. They would never ever want to, 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 to do something that would cause the Missy to run away. But it's a perception. It's a fear that she has. And some of you are like my little missy. <laughs> You're running away from something that you shouldn't be running away from. Grasshoppers don't eat grapes. And the devil would make you think that you're a grasshopper. No, you're not. You're a giant. Amen? Amen? And no weapon formed against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. No matter what we're going through in the economy, no matter what we're facing concerning uh, diseases, whatever it might be out there, God is on our side. God hasn't changed the direction of your destiny. God is with you all the way. And God will open the door. God will make the door wider than it's ever been. And God will protect you. God will keep you. And you're a covenant child. Amen? Amen? You know, you might be amazed at this. But go home and think about it for a week. And you'll find out that I'm saying what is correct biblically. 
But it wasn't that God got so mad with David for committing adultery. He was more mad with David for killing a covenant child. We are covenant people. People must be careful about touching covenant people. Amen? Amen. We belong to God. Now, I know some of you, your brain is going, no, don't worry about it. We're not for divorce. We're not for running around. We're not for committing adultery. But I'll tell you what. We are covenant children. That's why it's quite important for you to believe God for your children to marry other covenant children. Hallelujah. But we have a covenant with God that God says, my God shall provide for us right in the midst of tough times. He shall meet all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So we don't have to live in anxiety. We don't have to live in fear. We know that he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. That God is the God of the second chance. God is the God of picking you up and getting you going again. When you fail, fail forwards. Come on, somebody say amen this morning. Don't let it get real quiet in this church that I think I'm in the first Episcopalian Anglican ice of the AIDS church. We're at Rhema this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. In Genesis 15 verse 1, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, do not be afraid. Now, it's amazing that God tells us not to fear 365 times in the Bible. You got one for each day of the year. In Genesis 26, 24, the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you. And multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. And when you can move on, in, you'll move up in life into your potential. I was having a bit of fun in the first service, so you don't mind if I do in the second. But, uh, and we've got to use wisdom. Doctors on the front row, yeah, I better be careful what I say. But uh, this thing about if you see somebody, don't greet them. Do this. It's like, a, it's like a Scottish dance. <laughs> but I want to thank God that you're here this morning. I'll be truthful with you. I'm a, I'm, I'm pastor and I preach it and I'm going to give you a positive message today. But I'll tell you, this week I thought, dear Jesus, please don't let me come to the church and it's only me there. (laughs) Just let a few come. But look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Bless you. Bless you. We appreciate you so much. In Psalms 34, 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me. He delivered me from all my fears. Psalms 34, 17, the righteous cry out, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Now, firstly, and this will tie in later much more. Firstly, obedience is required to experience forward motion. You see, fear neutralizes. It's an amazing thing, but if you see a truck in one of the game reserves come around the corner and there's a buck and the lights are shining into the buck's eyes. All the buck does is this. Doesn't move. And some of you are doing this. Get over it. Get under it. Get with it. But God's on your side. Amen. And his angels encamp around about us. Oh, this week I loved that. I said, thank you, Jesus. Our angels are working overtime, but thank God they're working for us. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, 
according to the power that worketh, that worketh, that worketh in us. So get back after you fall. Paul said in Acts 26, 19, Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. And God has given you destiny. God has given you vision. This whole year we've been talking about vision. And if the economy is not so great, it's still not going to change God's vision and God's destiny for your life. Come on, somebody say amen. Don't open the door to worry and fear. 1 John 2, 17 from the message reads, the world and all it's wanting, wanting, wanting is on the way out, but whoever does what God wants is set for eternity. Hallelujah. One of my favorite scriptures is Isaiah 1, 19. If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. God wants us to have the spirit of Joshua and Caleb this morning. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, God wants you to have the spirit of Joshua and Caleb. In Numbers 14, 24, my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him, has followed me fully. And I'll bring him into a land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. Now, secondly, today, don't willingly take anything with you into the future that God does not want you to take. If it happened last year, leave it behind. Amen? Burn the bridges that need to be burned. Leave the baggage behind. In Philippines 3.13, brethren and sisters, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. If you've been hurt in the last year or two, if you've been let down, if you failed financially, if there are circumstances in your family, in a relationship, that hasn't worked out, get up, stand up, dust yourself off and say, Lord, I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you, Lord, that I've learned now that I mustn't do that. I thank you, Lord, that I'm forgiven. I thank you, Lord, that you're on my side. I thank you, Lord, that you're gonna provide for me every step of the way. And when somebody says, what about that over there? Say, what? What? I don't know what you're talking about. Bye. <laughs> Amen. There's about five of you that clapped. Come on, if you believe that today. You're coming out on the other side. Amen. And so God wants you to experience a fullness of purpose, fulfillment, and genuine joy in life. God's with you. God's on your side. God wants the best for you. So see yourself as God sees you. This is very important because fear and anxiety gives you a false perception. And all of a sudden you begin to think to yourself, I'm a failure. I'm no good. I'm useless. I'll never ever again be able to be used of God. I'll never again to be in a position in business to help financially with the ministry. My life is over. Your life is just begun. It's not over. It's a new beginning. It's a new start. It's a new way. Amen? And Doc, the best is still to come for both of you there. I'm telling you, the best is still to come. 
Tell the person next to you, the best is still to come. And fear will produce a grasshopper mentality. It's not by what some people may say about you that counts. It's what God says about you that counts. You see, fear will make you act irrationally. So we must continually ask ourselves, does this way of thinking and believing line up with what God says about me, what God says about you? Is it in line? That's why I believe in the next weeks to come, I will encourage you, get back into the Word of God if you haven't been. Get back into the place where you take scriptures every day and meditate on them, the ones that God tells you about you. Get back to the place that you have prayer meetings and you attend them. Amen. Get back to the place where you stand strong in God, trusting God, believing God, standing by faith in God. Don't determine your potential by other people's opinions. Only God's. Opinions might say that you are insignificant. God says that you are valuable and precious. Opinions might say that your best days are over. God says that your best days are ahead. Opinions say that you messed up to where God cannot use you anymore. God says that his plan for your life is still intact. It's still intact. It's still in place. It's still not changed. It's still intact for the family. Amen? You see, opinions say that you messed up to where you cannot use, he cannot use you anymore. God says that his plan for your life is still intact. Amen. Ephesians 4, 23 and 24. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That you put on the new man or woman which was, has been created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Some of you have let that slip. And you haven't been spending enough time in renewing your mind. Thanks for that amen. amen. Over here. Thank you. Gain a clear vision for what God still has ahead for you. I'm telling you, I still believe and still have vision ahead for the years to come. Amen? For the years to come. I personally, I, me personally, I'm not going to retire. I might go home and I'll be happier than all of you combined. To be absent from your body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. But I'll tell you what. I'm not going to sit fishing all day. Uh, Zelda, uh, can we try and catch another fish? No, bless God. I'm going to preach with everything I've got to anybody that will listen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. One of my favorite verses, Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm going to read it from the message. I know what I'm doing. I have it planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. Isn't that great? So let's stay focused on that today. Let's stay focused on what God's shown you. It's an amazing thing, but you might have got a word from God. You might have a prophecy from God. God might have spoken to you through the word of God. And all of a sudden, a year goes by and you've let it slip. And you've forgotten about it. Bring it back into your renewed mind. And make it a focus of your life. Fear will distract your thinking and actions. 
You see, a shadow of a dog never harmed anybody. <laughs> I was watching a program the, the other night, and uh, a documentary, and uh, it's about these people that don't see each other, but they get a relationship going, and then they want to meet each other to see if they can get married. And the one guy, his name is Big Ed, and he's about four foot eight, but he's Big Ed. <laughs> and he'd never seen the girl that he went to go and marry, but when he arrived and she saw Big Ed, she went, no, 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 no. <laughs> now the devil wants to be Big Ed in your life. <laughs> he wants to keep you in fear. He wants to tell you you're not going to make it. He wants to tell you you're not going to climb that mountain. He wants to tell you that you're not going to have victory. But I'll tell you, in the spirit, you're big head. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Male or female. You see, fear will make your vision blurred and out of focus. The vision God has for your life is just... It's just that. It's for your life. You are unique to God. You're not a carbon copy of some other human being. Uh, uh, Brother Hagen was a wonderful man of God, prophet. And when he preached, he'd do his fingers like this, and he'd walk with a bent back like I do now a little bit. Just a little bit. But he, he used to walk like this. Everybody that came out of Bible school the first time they got a chance to preach, I'll tell you now, and they take on an Oklahoma American accent. Have you seen that? Some South Africans have got American accents, but they've never been to America. <laughs> praise God! Praise God! No, just be the best possible you you can be. Amen. And God will use you mightily and wonderfully. Hallelujah. Keep authentic. Hallelujah. His plan and purpose for your life will not change. His faithfulness is constant. His commitment to you is eternal. And his love will not waver. Closing, Philippines 1, verse 6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion until the day of Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 2, 13. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He remains faithful. Amen. He remains faithful. He remains faithful, people. He remains faithful. I've seen some of you go through some things in the past 30 years that you've been here, but he's always been faithful to you. Amen. And lastly, Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Amen and amen.